Meal planning is important because it prevents us from being a disappointed wreck when dinner time comes around and we have no clue what to make, or even if we have the ingredients to make the meal. It's a time and a money saver, but most importantly, it frees up valuable brain space. Creating a meal plan prepares us for the week to come and gives us peace of mind that we're organized and can feed ourselves and our family. That's why I do it, and that's why Plan to Eat helps me do it. Your subscription includes access to the Plan to Eat website and fully featured mobile apps on iOS and Android. And Plan to Eat gives you the tools to clip and organize recipes from any website, the ones your family loves and that fit your dietary preferences and needs. And you can create a meal plan around your schedule. Then what happens is the Plan to Eat software automatically creates an organized shopping list based on your plan. So sign up for your free trial at plantoeat.com slash timecrafting. That's plantoeat.com forward slash timecrafting. The coupon will be automatically applied to your account and can be used when you're ready to subscribe. It's valid for new customers only. Give Plan to Eat a try today. Welcome to the Productivities Podcast. It's me, Mike Vardy. And I want to share with you the most productive thing that I've been doing as of late. Now, it's not, you know, this podcast and it's not my writing and it's not coaching and it's not the gardening that I've been trying to get involved with at home and it's not helping out around the house more because the kids are home. It's not the woodworking. It's none of that. As a matter of fact, uh, I've been rather unproductive in some areas, including getting this episode out on time. This episode was supposed to be out uh, a couple of days ago, if you're listening to this when it goes live. No, um, the most productive thing that I've been doing lately is listening and learning about uh, about what's been going on uh, in the United States of America, uh, especially with relation to uh, George Floyd and uh, Black Lives Matter. And um, that's, that's been what I've been spending time with. And I don't normally, let me, let me rephrase that. I haven't gone down this path with my work before. I've long thought or, or held to the, the belief that your, your online platform, you kind of steer clear of the things that you would steer clear of uh, when you're on a first date, you know, the idea of sex, religion, and politics, but this is not about any of that stuff. Uh, and, and, and to me, I think that, that, that was something I was blind to. I was, um, I come from, I mean, let's face it. I, as a Canadian, as a white male Canadian, I come from a place of privilege. There's no question. And, um, when I saw, and, and I've been seeing what's going on in the, in the news, um, it struck me. And I realized that, you know, I wasn't doing anything. Um, I, <clears throat> I have a platform, the podcast that you're listening to, my writing, uh, my presence online. I have all of that. And I didn't know what I could do because uh, I didn't want to freak anybody out. I didn't want to... Um, I'm recording this right now, by the way, as my uh, my son's playing video games in the background. I need to get this out now. This is so otherwise, so you might hear a little bit in the background. So this is a bit a bit different of a, of, of an episode, clearly. But here's the thing. Uh, I I I I didn't know what to do, so I I I reached out to some of my friends, my friend Patrick Roan, Travis Collier, uh, and 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 some others, and said, "What what can I do? What can I do?" and I think number one, reaching out was, they said that reaching out was, was Patrick specifically said that, you know, checking in and reaching out was, was one step. And to me that, that I, that's something I would do. I think I would do anyway, but that's not the point. Uh, The, the message I kept hearing from them and seeing online was to spend time learning and listening. And it's, it's, it's fitting that today, as I'm recording this, is my listening day. 
and it's a day where many people uh, that I noticed adopted Blackout Tuesday, which whether you followed on that trend or did not, I know I did. I did not use the hashtag Black Lives Matter with it because I didn't think it was appropriate, and it seems as if that was definitely the case. But I also... I think my goal was to kind of just show what I what my beliefs were, what I thought. But it's not enough. It's not enough. Um, you know, uh, again, being I was watching Rachel Rogers talk about this today. Who and I've seen her work before, and you know she's friends with uh, with other people I know online, and I've actually bought her products before and and saw her, her Instagram post and it was pretty it was uh, just enough like today that's what I did I did a lot of that's what my goal was for today was to do take that spirit of what what today was supposed to be about I canceled my interviews that I had for podcasts and re, we rescheduled them and uh, basically focused on that today focused on the things that Patrick and, and others said I could do to get to, to figure out what I could do to get better at that to, or at least start to get better at that, to learn, to listen. I, I took the time to, uh, you know, listen to, uh, the blinks because <laughs> I have blinkist. So I figured I would use it, uh, the blinks for white fragility and to how to be an anti-racist. And there's things I learned there that I did not know, even, even as a Canadian and, and, and to say that systemic and, 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 uh, systematized racism and r- racialization is not uh, is is a uniquely American situation for Black people is not true at all. It, it happens in countries all over. In Canada, maybe more so for Indigenous people. Um, but again, I don't know enough about that, and I think that's that's something that is hard. And I'm putting that in air quotes for you know, to kind of swallow is that you don't know. And to say that you don't know and be okay with not knowing as that first step before getting educated. And I mean, reading the blinks of those or listening to the the audio versions of those is just the start. I have to keep going. I mean, I've spent the better part of a decade studying productivity, being very focused and hyper-focused on that stuff. Um, And over the past several months when I've been at home through this season of COVID-19 that we're in, which again is filled with uncertainty. Um, I've been exploring other things and today, last night and then into today, I, I decided that I was going to explore this and then I've decided to take it to another level. I've decided that learning and listening is part of the thing, part of the equation, part of what needs to be done but the most productive thing I can do is to take that and, and, and go beyond. It's to say that, you know what, uh, when my son went, and this is going to sound weird and maybe this is wrong. And by the way, I know I'm going to screw this up. I know that there's somewhere along the line with what I'm saying right now. I'm probably going to write something about this too, but I know that the podcast is something I can say and and it's, it's just, it, this is not, I mean, I'm not scripting any of this right now. I have, I want to kind of um, compa- compartmentalize my thoughts even further. But I remember when I went to a comic expo with my son two years ago and he dressed as Black Panther because the movie came out and he loved the movie Black Panther. He thought it was cool, bought the co- Halloween costume. And I remember when we were at the, we were walking through and someone wanted a picture of him. And then somebody walking by said cultural appropriation at its cutest. And I kind of, ch- I chuckled. And I, but what I really wanted to say was, you know, I wanted to tell the guy that where to go. Because my son didn't know. And didn't, here's the best, didn't, didn't know. I wouldn't say, I couldn't say, I guess he didn't care because he doesn't know. But like, well, you know, he's a redheaded white eight-year-old wearing a Black Panther costume because he thinks Black Panther's cool. And then it becomes this thing that makes you feel kind of dirty. Like, that's how I felt a little bit. And and again, I don't know if that's the right feeling. I don't, I don't know if not saying anything was the right thing. And I think 
I'm just tired of, of that. Tired of the being, uh, you know, complicit for lack of a better term, maybe just, you know, um, being nice, <laughs> not saying this, like I'm frankly, and, and I know that this, this, this is, um, polarized. It, it can be polarizing to some people. It's not polarizing to me. I mean, racism is wrong. The line must be drawn. It, 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 it's wrong. It's despicable. It needs to stop. It's, you know, if you want me to use a product, it's a box that must be checked off. It's something that needs to be worked on daily, just like anything else to get better and better and better at it. And that's something that I want to do. And I'm going to do. And I mean, um, you know, uh, but I, I know I'm not going to get this right. I, I, I know that. And I, I will continue to learn and continue to read and, and research and, 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 and at, take action. I remember Jada Selner spoke at World Domination Summit and she said the, the, the one step that you need to take is take imperfect action. And this is imperfect action for me without question. Um, because I don't, I think it's, it's just wrong. And it's not just wrong now. It's, it was wrong before. And I don't want it to be something that is, I want it to be gone. And I want to do what I can do to help with that. Uh, I had other things that I wanted to say. And, and uh, I had some other um, examples, I think, or, but they're just kind of gone. I'm just, oh, um, I remember, actually, here it, here it is. I remember when I said earlier that, that you know, I try not to be politic, you know, be like the first date stuff. And I, I sent an email newsletter out several years ago. And, you know, if you've been following my work for a while, that you know I'm a night owl. And my friend, actually, my friend Kevin Ashenbrenner sent me a Guardian article this week about being a night owl and he tagged me. People will tag me. In Charlie Gilkey's book, he I, I mentioned being a night owl. That's something that I'm really passionate about. And a few years ago, I shared in my attention newsletter, it wasn't called the attention newsletter then, but I shared in my weekly newsletter the day in the life of Barack Obama because he was a night owl and I wanted to show his schedule. Now, again, I need you to keep in mind when I say this, I'm Canadian. I can't vote for any American election candidate at all for any presidential governor. So I can't do any of that. I don't know enough about it either. I, I, I know a bit, but I don't know enough of how that would work. And I like to learn about this stuff too, but I digress. I sent that email out and I remember getting emails back from people, not a ton, but several saying that they were, they were annoyed. No, they were pissed off that I mentioned Barack Obama in my email newsletter and said that I was a, basically saying, if you're an Obama supporter, I can't support you. And <laughs> I replied and said, well, first off, um, I said, you know, I was talking about being a night owl. And that's why I mentioned that. And it wouldn't have mattered whether it was a Republican president or a Democratic president or a liberal prime minister or a conservative. I would have meant if I find somebody that's a night owl, which is a, a small segment of the population and they are successful, I'm going to showcase that. But then I also said I'm Canadian, so I have no I don't have a, a, a horse in that race. But what I should have said what I'm saying now is I remember sitting in my wife's, one of my wife's first work areas. This is before we were married or maybe we were just, it was, she was working at an acupuncture clinic and there was a Time magazine sitting on the, the in the waiting room area and it had a picture of, 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 of a black man on it. And it said, is this the next president of the United States or something like that? I can't remember. I actually... I, I would know if I, uh, I'll tell you how I would know in a minute, but, and I looked at it, read through the article and I read about this man and I thought, you know what? I would love to see that based on that article. I would love to have seen that happen. And it did. And I actually went and again, 
I'm a Canadian, <laughs> and bought that magazine off of eBay a couple of years ago. I have it. I don't know where it is right now, to be honest. I don't have it hanging in my office or anything like that, but I do own it. So why am I mentioning this? Because I should have said yes. <laughs> I do support Barack Obama. I like what he does. I like what he stands for. I, But again, I don't think that being I don't think that politics has to play a role in every single decision, every single thought, every single it I have friends that are Republicans, I have friends that are Democrats, I have friends in Canada that are conservatives, liberals. What I can't stand for is when people uh I can't stand idly by when people uh support a person that is so condemns so many people and, and 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 I just can't I can't do it. It's hard for me to put into words. I, I got I mean, you know, we we had a prime minister here that I didn't agree with for many years. He was in charge for ten years. He did things that I totally disagreed with, and I didn't say anything. And Stephen Harper was the guy. Did not like him. I like Justin Trudeau. I do. And, uh, you know, when people say today, w- w- with what he said today, if you're listening to this as it came out, and he had that 20-second pause where he didn't say anything when he was asked what he thinks about what was going on with uh, in the United States, and he was asked specifically about President Donald Trump, he had 21 seconds of silence where he didn't say anything. And I saw the comments that people said after that. They said, well, it must be nice for him to... Because what, what Prime Minister Trudeau did is he, he said... You know, uh, we have to work on racism in Canada, too. And we do. And not just in Canada, but globally. But he focused on Canada because that's where he has a, a greater degree of, of control is not the right word, influence. His circle of influence is greater there. Now, what's interesting is in the comments, uh, some people were very supportive. Others said, reminded about when Trudeau wore blackface, when he was uh, a teacher. No excuse for that, but we all can learn from our mistakes. And if you live in the public life, you live a public life, you have a, you have a uh, influence, you have a public platform, you know, that stuff's going to come back to you. You know that that you have to know that. Um, The question is, is if you make a mistake, own up to it. And then, yes, people will still condemn you for it. People will still say, you know, I don't like what you did. I don't like what you said. You have to live with that. Rachel Rogers talked about there is a risk to that. To, I mean, uh, you know, you're going to risk things when you take a stand. Um, and that ticked me off when I saw that because I'm like, yeah, he knows it, but he's the leader of the country right now. and 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 I can say that, I, I voted for his part. I voted, I didn't, sorry, I didn't vote for his party. I think he's the best leader for our, our country because I voted in a way that I believe you should vote in your, you should vote for the person in your riding that you believe. But nonetheless, I, I, you know, I know I'm a little bit all over the place here, but this has been a long time coming and having a day to just sit with this, uh, I know that there's a chance that people are going to listen to this and say, well, there it is. He, uh, he's, a, he's left, which I'd say I'm center, center left for sure. That's my ideology. I believe that strongly. Uh, he, uh, he doesn't like Trump. I do not like Donald Trump. I do not like his policies. I do not like how he treats people. I don't. Everything I see, and I don't just look at, I look at a wide variety of news when I look at both inside of the United States of America and outside where it's objective. And I do not like what I see. I don't know that I like what I see from the other side necessarily either. But I can say that I don't, I, I can say I don't like that person. But I can say that I have plenty of friends that are Republican, that have Republican beliefs that I do like. But that that th- those things should be you can I think you can have the um, I, you can have those beliefs and say but I don't like the person and then you get to reconcile whether or not you would vote for that person or you know because of that like that and that's something I'm gonna have to get to 
But right now, I'm, I mean, back to the matter at hand. Because, see, this stuff all becomes intertwined. And maybe because it's intertwined for me right now, because I haven't said anything, I've been very, you know, kind of quiet. I, at this point, um, I'm not going to be quiet. I'm not going to be. Racism is wrong. What happened was murder in Minneapolis. That, that police officer should go to jail for a very, very long time. And so should those that were there that did nothing. Amy Cooper was absolutely got what she deserved. And actually, she should have, as far as I'm concerned, she should have gotten more. I, I'm going to learn and listen. And yeah, I am probably screwed some of this up. And I'll learn from that too. But I've always believed that productivity, and I'll bring this back to what I do talk about regularly, is about intention plus attention. You have something that you want to give. If you, if you have an intention to do something, then you better find a way to give attention to it or it's going to fall by the wayside. You're not going to give it the best that you can give it. Well, I can tell you right now that I am going to, my intention is to get better at this, is to understand better. I can never, ever, ever understand the experience because I'm a white Canadian male. I can listen, I can learn, I can have empathy, I think, I hope. But if I'm going to be somebody that says, hey, if you have an intention to do something, you need to find a way to pay attention to it, I think this is, this is my first step. I can go back and listen to this and remind myself and journaling, all that stuff. I've been, but today was a good day, I think, for me. Um, so there you have it. Whew. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any thoughts, you want to email me, I'm all ears. Ask Mike at productivityist.com. Ask Mike at productivityist.com. Feel free to email me. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Um, take care and uh, keep moving things forward.